हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट मॉलिकुलर मेथड्स यूज्ड इन डायग्नोसिस ऑफ ट्यूबर क्लासेस एज वी अंडरस्टैंड एज पर द प्रेजेंट सीनारियो द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ ट्यूबर क्लासेस एज अर्ली एज पॉसिबल इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज टू प्रिवेंट द ट्यूबर क्लासेस among the non infected patient it is necessary to diagnose as early as possible so we have certain techniques which can diagnose tuberculosis as well as drug resistance in tuberculosis very soon so one of those techniques are like line probe assay an automated nart system the automated nart system include cb nart and true nart cb nart is cartridge based nucleic acid amplification technique also called as gene expert second one is true nart that is also for the diagnosis of tuberculosis and resistance to the rifampicin that can be diagnosed by true nart true nart is developed in india and third technique is whole genome sequencing so first technique lpa technique that is line probe assay that is based on reverse hybridization dna strip technology so line probe assay we have to use certain probe to attach to the dna material of the tuberculosis and will amplify and then it will be detected in a strip which we can use in a lpa kit like gino type mtd r so the first technique is line probe assay or lpa technique that is based on reverse hybridization dna strip technology lpa kits we can use are genotype mycobacterium tuberculosis drug resistance plus wall 2 that is mtbdr plus wall 2 made in the germany by life science hain life science and the test is known as a hain test and it is used in india second is nipro ntm m d r t b that is multi drug resistance tuberculosis k2 that is made in the japan by nipro and the probe to identify m t b complex they are mutation in the rpob gene that is used for rifampicin resistance and mutation in cat g or the inh promoter region that is isoniazide resistance who recommends the use of lpa as a rapid diagnostic test for detection of rifampicin and isoniazide resistance directly from specimen or a bacterial isolate so it is recommended by rntcp also so it is a very good technique to detect the mycobacterium tuberculosis along with the drug resistance to rifampicin and isoniazide so this is the picture taken from genotype mtbdr plus here first step is dna extraction so here we have a specimen then that will be processed for the isolation of dna so there will be a few uh, free dna then this portion is added into the pcr machine like this so there will be amplification of those dna which we have extracted from the sample so it will be amplified in a many copies then that copies are used for the reverse hybridization technique 
against the specific DNF probe, they are bound on the strip. So these are the specific probe bound on the strip against which we have added this amplified product that complementary amplified product will get attached and there will be a reaction. So in short if we talk there will be a production of line at the end as you can see over here or the colored line. That's why it is known as a line probe assay. Okay. So that will be detected on a strip in the form of line. So this is the total normal tuberculosis presence of tuberculous bacilli without any resistance of the drug. Here RPOB gene is for rifampicin, CAT gene and INHA gene is for isoniazide. So what is the interpretation? In the wild type as we can see these are the wild type. These are the normal without mutation strain of the tuberculosis. Then RPOB mutation prop 2A. Mutation prop 2A is for the mutated strain. So if the, the line against this gene are present over here, it is suggestive of the resistance to the reform PC. In the CAD gene, the wild type that is without mutation and the mutation type that is with, with mutation against the isoniazide drug. INHA locus that is also for the isoniazide wild type is without mutation and mutated type is for the mutation in the isoniazide. The first locus is of control locus. Okay, So that should be present in all this strip to consider the test is valid otherwise it is invalid. So it should be present in all the strip whatever the result against the reform pacin and the isoniazide. So if we consider this, this strip is reform pacin and isoniazide resistance. So here what happens, this line is present that is against the wild type but here the line is absent that is also wild type. So absence of any wild type and may be a presence of mutation type mutation probe the line against the mutation probe of that particular gene is referred as a resistance against that particular drug the rpob gene detection if the mutation mutated rpob gene is present means there is a resistance to, to reform pacing so here there is absence of wild type and simultaneously there is presence of mutated type like okay same way this is the mutation cat mutation prop the line is present against that so isoniazide resistance along with the wild type absence of wild type prop here in INHA absence of mutation here but the presence of wild type is there but presence of this suggests it is isoniazide resistance here only the isoniazide resistance because all the rpob gene that are wild type are present mutated type are absent and look in a cat g locus wild type present mutation absent over here the wild type is present simultaneously the mutated one is also present so this is a isoniazide resistance because of this then rifampicin and isoniazide resistance so here the presence of mutated rpob mutation prop 3 is positive here the cat g mutation prop 2 is positive here the INHA mutation prop 3A is positive. So it is reform PCN and isoniazide resistant. 
I hope you understood this also. So I'm not going in detail. Then there is a second slide LPM. That was the first line LPM. The previous slide is showing the first line LPM. That is the first line drug rifampicin and isoniazide. So if there is a res if the the if there is a resistance in the test, then we have to go for the second line LPM for the fluoroquinolones and second line injectables. So here same way we can interpret. But what are the gene used for detection of resistance are gyrase gene that is GYR gyrase gene for the fluoroquinolone and the RRS and ERS for the second line injectable amino glycosides. So this we can use. Now what are the advantage of using the LPM? So useful method to rule out tuberculosis and MDR-TB. Because if rifampicin and isoniazide resistance, we will call it as a MDR-TB. So it also detect monoresistance to rifampicin and isoniazide. Also detect in second line, we can detect resistance to fluoroquinone and second line injectable aminoglycosides. And it will give result in 72 hours. This is the very good thing about the LPA. It will give result in the 72 hours itself. But the disadvantage it requires suitable facility for the lab in a laboratory because all these steps are inside the lab like extraction amplification and hybridization so for that we have to require the uh, suitable laboratory facilities and also a skilled lab personally very trained technician can do this very uh, properly and test is not useful in direct testing with smear negative sputum whenever there is a low bacterial load we cannot do LPA right so if we want to do LPA the load of the bacteria should be high in short the smear should be positive then only we will do LPA in that case if the bacterial load is low or smear, uh, the smear is negative then we have to go for the CB nut that is cartridge based nucleic acid amplification technique. So if the high bacterial load suspected in the patient then only we can use. So uh, possibacillary tuberculosis we cannot use same extra pulmonary tuberculosis we cannot use it is only used for the pulmonary tuberculosis. For the extra pulmonary tuberculosis we require CB nut. The sample which are contaminated with blood or the sample collected and uh, if there is a bleeding sites and some amount of blood is there in the sample we cannot use LPA. In highly suspected isoniazide resistance that that may be a pretest probability the culture based DST is still being used to evaluate patient when LPA does not detect it. Sensitivity and specificity. For the reform patient resistance both on MTB isolate and on the clinical specimen pulled sensitivity is 98.1% and pulled specificity is 98.7%. Isoniazide resistance the variable sensitivity in high heterogeneous across the study that is pulled sensitivity is 84.3% and pulled specificity is 99.5%. So in second line LPA, WHO recommends the first and only rapid test. LPA is the first and only rapid test for detection of additional resistance. And as identified genetic mutation in fluoroquinolones, second line drugs, aminoglycoside and cyclic peptides, as well as ethambutol in MDR and XDR patient. And reliable method to rule out in a second line drug resistance.